Hi, I'm John Beachwood from Northwest Wood Turners, and today we're going to go over making pepper grinders. And uh, the, these are ones that I've made recently, and it, as you can tell, a lot of these are laminated. Uh, the one we're going to do on the lathe today is a solid piece of walnut, though. Uh, I do the laminated ones because I like the light and color, so you can tell which is pepper, which is salt. And then design uh, is pretty subjective. You can do whatever you want on the outside as long as the inside is cut correctly. Uh, two, these two were done from an identical blank. Actually, these two were done from an identical blank. This one was actually cut in half. But you can see by changing the design, the it looks completely different even though it was the same blank. So. Play with your design and come up with something you like. Uh, the height of these is almost always seven and a half inches because that's what I find people prefer about this size. Uh, if I get too big, then they sit forever and they never move. I also like to put coasters on these because all of these are bottom grind, bottom adjust. Uh, and with the coaster, when you set it down, it doesn't leave a ring of salt or pepper. In the instructions, it tells you to cut the top half and the bottom half separately at a, two different blanks. I don't do it that way. I do, I do this all in one piece uh, because then my alignment is always spot on. Uh, and we'll go over the steps to make that happen and how I separate them uh, to make them line up always. One of the design features that I always do is I cut a taper. Uh, so this piece is separated from this piece and it leaves a taper here that makes it easy to fill but also it lines up perfectly. There's no wobble it just turns easy and it always stays centered here. Uh, but in order to make this design come out right, when you drill it, uh, you got to be fairly accurate. There's a little bit of margin of error, but not, not a lot. Uh, the nice thing about the tapered design, though, is if you are a little bit off, it will auto-correct and stay centered. So now we're going to talk about the kits. Uh, for this type of grinder, I use two kits. Uh, this one is made by Penn State. Uh, adjust on the bottom. This is the top. This one is crush grind. They're both ceramics. This one has a little bit of a different adjustment knob. And the instructions on this one most of the ones I found are in metric, uh, but they convert identical to the measurements for this one. So uh, here's the here's the inside that we're looking for, uh, and this gives the the diameter and the depth. This first step isn't isn't a critical you know it says three quarters but it's not super critical what is critical is this this cylinder right here and the relationship to your top uh, that is definitely critical because this is what makes this line up if this if this shoulder on that first hole and this second hole aren't perfect or close to perfect, then when you get to the top, it doesn't line up correctly. So we'll go over that on the lathe as we're making these. Tools. Uh, this one takes uh, four Forstner bits, uh, uh, seven eighths, inch and a sixteenth, inch and a half, inch and three quarter. Uh, the, 
The directions say you need a minimum of two and a half inches on your blank or three inches on your blank. I try to get my bottoms of mine uh, right around two and a half inches. Uh, that leaves a nice wall thickness here, but also when I make the coasters for them, the two and a half inch ones seem to be the, a good size for versatile use. Uh, the blank you need, uh, it says in the directions it'll tell you that you need a three inch blank. Uh, I, you can get away with two and a half, uh, but this one right here is three. This one is already cut and has a tenon on it. This is the one we'll use today. And this one is about two and three quarters. So we have a little bit of room. And this one, the overall length, is about eight inches. So we got a little bit of room to play with this one. Uh, <coughs> the other tools you need, you're going to need a chuck that goes in your tailstock. And then uh, a lot of people use these to cut the recess right here. This set of directions doesn't have the recess. The recess is for locking in the bottom section. Uh, one thing I have found is if you cut it straight with the sorby tool, it only matches up close. So the top half of the tang doesn't seat all the way in the groove. So I go back and cut it a little bit deeper with this tool, which is also a sorby uh, for doing pepper grinders. A lot of people cut these off and just glue this in, which is another option. If you don't have these or you don't have a way to make that uh, recess, then a lot of people cut this little tab off and then glue around here when they put it in. And we'll go over that when we put this together in just a little bit. Okay, this is a piece of walnut. Uh, this is the blank we're going to use to make the pepper grinder. It is about eight and a quarter inches long <clears throat> by two and three quarter inches in diameter. Uh, this piece is already rounded and I cut a tenon. Uh, and sizing on the tenon is really critical because we need this to get as tight in here as we can because when we're out here drilling this end we don't want it to move so we need to have a tight grab right here to hold this steady because we we're going to be drilling out here so this tenon is sized very carefully so that my jaws are open just a little bit and when I tighten this down I have full contact all the way around the jaws. <clears throat> Before I tighten it all the way up we're going to check, check it and if we did it right that lines up perfect. So that means my tenon here is set solid and this piece is straight to the tailstock so when I start drilling it my alignment throughout the whole pepper grinder will be uh, correct so that when I get the top and the bottom they match. Because, because I know I'm going to be putting a lot of stress here, I make sure these are pretty good and tight. Uh, and also, if you look, I've got just over an eighth of an inch gap here, which means I probably have full contact on my jaws all the way around, and that's the strongest hold you can get. The Forstner bits I'm using for this uh, have a hexagon on this end instead of the round, uh, because these grab solid, they align correctly, and I don't have to worry about it spinning when it's mounted up in my chuck. 
The other reason is later on when you use an extension, if you have these two set screws right here that hold it, they have a flat to grab it. I have found that the ones that have the round end on them tend to spin on me. So now we're going to drill the first step, which is inch and three quarter, and we're going to go three quarters of an inch down. I have a tendency to tighten up uh, the lock on my tailstock just until it's touching because we want to eliminate any chatter coming from my tailstock. The other thing I do is this is a hexagon bit like I mentioned earlier but it's in here and it's tight. So I'm going to tighten this down. We're going to we're going to turn this one pretty slow. Probably about 250. We'll see how well that cuts. and a half and according to the directions we want a total depth of two and an eighth. Uh, I, I like to go more towards two and three eighths because all you're adjusting is for this distance right here. So if you go a little bit beyond it doesn't hurt anything. Uh, but if you get a little bit too short this doesn't seat against the bottom. So I always err a little bit and go a little bit deeper. And I figure the worst that will happen is this will hold just a little bit more pepper or salt. And then I'm going to use the quill. So I have the quill set right here to three quarter because I know my first step is three quarter. Then when I get to two and an eighth here, I know I'm at my minimum depth and I'll just go a little bit beyond that. I find this to be a good guide but I don't find it to be all that accurate. So I just use it as a rough guide, but I trust my handy little scale. One thing I wanted to also mention is I'm going to speed this up to about 1200, and I'm just going to squeeze in and touch it. Because if you, if you noticed, when I first started cutting, I was getting a little bit of chattering. But I want this one to be dead center. 
if the cylinder fits in there dead center, my alignment to the top comes out right. So uh, if by speeding it up to about 1,000, 1,200 RPMs and holding on to my chuck, it makes it makes that center true itself up. And you can see now I get no I get no jump out of my bit. It's just dead. check. I, this said I was at 208. Now we're going to use this tool to cut the recess that this little tab will lock into. And uh, a lot of people will go ahead and cut these off. If you don't have one of these tools, you can just cut these off and then super glue it. And then this goes in and rides against the bottom of the first, the first, when we did the one and three quarter, it rides right on that lip, which is on the draw line. So we're going to use this, and this little shoulder is going to rest right there, and we're going to cut the notch right up in here. So you can see how this tool works. And for this cut, you were going to use this shoulder against this shoulder right here, and that depth matches the pepper grinder, the bottom cylinder. And then we'll use the other tool to extend this just a little bit. So that's the first one. Now I'm going to use this one because it doesn't have a shoulder on it. And I'm going to find my shoulder for what I just cut. right there and I can see it when I'm looking. So now I doubled the width of that channel. So now I know when this when this gets pressed in and locks it's got enough room for the full lock. So we're going to drill to an inch and a sixteenth and we're going to drill our our full depth. So, so this step we're going to drill the inch and a sixteenth. This, this measurement isn't critical. Uh, as long as you have a consistent cavity for the salt or pepper to, to be in all the way through. Uh, if you have an inch, use an inch. If you have an inch and uh, whatever, it doesn't matter. You could actually run your inch and a half all the way through, but it, it limits your design options later. I think the inch and sixteenth is what allows you to have a little bit of profile to it uh, because it's it's a little more forgiving on the inside. Uh, it gives you a little more design option, but the, it's not really critical. And the length, this distance right here, how big you make your pepper grinder, it is also subjective to the kit you have. So now we need to know how how far do I want to drill this? Uh, because I need to leave two inches for the top. So I know I've got two and three eighths and I normally mark that so that's my two and three eighths mark. My cavity inside is two and three eighths. So when I'm designing this, I know I don't want to go too far down here, but this is where my step off is. And then I know I want this one to come back at least two inches from here. 
So I'll make a mark there. And then because I know when I cut my taper that I want a half inch. So from here to the bottom of my taper I want to be a half inch. So I'm going to mark that right now. So now I know I want, I want to drill this next step at least to right here. There's a reason we're not going to drill all the way into the top piece. And we'll, I'll show you that in a minute. But to the bottom of my taper, I know it looks like it's going to be about five and a quarter. So we're going to get, we're going to go five and three eighths. So we're going to drill this five and three eighths. So we're going to go a little bit beyond. So that when I cut my taper and separate the bottom from the top, I have a little eighth of an inch wiggle room. If I don't hit that parting tool correct, I got a little bit of a margin of error. Okay, I'm going to drill from the bottom all the way up to here. And I prefer to drill all from this end up to here. Uh, because for me it just makes it a, a truer cavity on the inside. Some of the directions say to just drill from this side and then flip it and drill from this side. But if this tenon is accurate and this cut is accurate, then it, I don't think it's necessary. So I always drill from one side to the other. And I'll go as far as I can with this bit and I'll have my tailstock as short as possible because I want this to be as solid as I can and I have very little deflection in my tool. So I know when I'm drilling it's going gonna, it's gonna to work out and I'll, I'll be dead center when I get up here. And if it's a little bit off when we flip this and true it, we'll be fine. Uh, but I do want to mention something about drilling laminated pieces. So a lot of the ones I do, I laminate. So when, when I'm drilling these, I have to be, one of the reasons I developed a method to get me a as accurate as possible is because sometimes the density of this wood and this wood isn't the same. So it, it has a tendency to want to wobble and then your alignment gets off. So the way I do it is basically to keep everything in the center regardless of what wood you're cutting or the densities. Uh, and some of the laminated ones I do, they'll have you know, six or seven pieces across here that all have different densities. So, going the way I do it keeps everything accurate regardless, whether it's one piece of wood or whether it's laminated. So once again, I'm going to spin this up to about a thousand. I'm going to lock my tailstock down and I'm just going to touch it. Now I'm going to slow down. And all I'm, all I'm doing, the only reason I'm doing that is to make sure that this is finding the center. And if you look, it looks like it's wobbling here, but it's dead, it's dead set right here. So the outside hasn't been true. The inside has. far as I can go with that bit and I have to add my extension. Uh, Forstner bits, all you really need to do is snug these up. You don't have to you don't have to worry about getting them super tight, just a little bit snug. And then we're going to verify our measurements. We're going to verify how deep we want to drill this, right? So I know we want to go about five and a quarter. So, 
Now we're at depth. 140 grit sandpaper. I'm just going to clean up the inside of this real quick. One of the things I just did is inside this cavity right here, one of the things I just did is I sanded this little edge off right here because this is flat on the top. And when you go to put these in, sometimes this little flat will hang up right here and it'll make it a bear to get this to start in there. But by just touching off that corner with the sandpaper, it allows this to slide in just a little bit better. Now I'm going to use my live center to support this. And since we know we drilled everything straight, we'll get no vibration. In fact, if you watch when I put this up, it just, you can see it sets in there and doesn't move because we took precautions to make sure all of these steps were drilled uh, pretty accurate. So now I'm set up that I can make my design. I can, I can shape however I want to do this one, uh, but more importantly, I can start my cut here so that I know where my part's going to be. And I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to start my part. So I'm going to start my part. And I'm going to start my part now, right here. I'm going to use a parting tool. This one, I ground down until it's about an eighth of an inch thick. But it's also not that tall. Uh, other parting tools I have are a little bit too tall. And because I'm cutting in with the radius, it would bind up. So. I ground this down, uh, this is about a 65 degree angle here and about a 30 degree angle here. And this bevel gives me the right feel, and I've been playing with this, so it, I, it gives me the right feel, but having the 65 degree angle on the top makes it almost like a negative rake scraper when you're parting. So I'll show you how well this works here in a minute, hopefully. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to start on this line and I'm trying to end my part on this line. I'm only going to go up part way right now and then we're going to finish the whole design and then we'll part it at the end. But the bottom will be almost completely done before we take it out of here. So I'm running about 690-700 RPMs. So I'm deep enough, and if you if you watched the chips coming off of that, they're a nice ribbon, and uh, it took me a while to get the right angles on this tool. So. Play with the top angle and the bottom angle and see what works best for you. Uh, this is just what works best for me. So now we're going to do a, a quick design. And I don't need my marks anymore because, well, this one's a good one to know. And, I've, and I just noticed we got a nice knot right there couple knots in there. That should look pretty. And we're going to take the calipers and I'm going to set these to just shy of two and a half. And like I said, the reason I like just shy of two and a half is it feels like a good size and then the coasters, since I have a two and a half inch Forstner bit, when I make the coasters if I make them just a little bit shy, 
they all sit in the coasters without any uh, problems. So. Running at about a thousand eleven hundred RPMs. Now we got the this part done, the neck. Now we're going to switch over to this side and I want to come from this direction and make them blend in. I did want to mention that right now I'm using a, a 3 8 inch spindle gouge and it's sharpened to the standard 45 and I think the wing is set back at about 25 on this one. So uh, it is important to have a sharp tool. So when I'm cutting these, when I do the design, uh, the, people are going to grab it right here. So, so most people grab it right here in the middle, like that, and that's how they operate it. So, if it's too big around here, people with a smaller hand aren't going to like it. So, I have a, a whole bunch of different ones. Some of them I cut a little bit narrower here, some of them I cut a little bit larger. But, I play with the design to make sure that it'll fit in your hand and you can operate it. And then... The only thing you got to watch out for is you drill this to an inch and a sixteenth. So as long as you don't exceed an inch and a sixteenth, you're good. Actually, I'd probably say an inch and a half, but give yourself a little bit of room. All right, so this is where this is where we mark it earlier. I stop there so I know where to make my transition because I don't want to get too close. To my cavity right here. I think I can do it from this side. About thirteen hundred RPMs. So I'm almost done the shape. I'm gonna. I just sanded this. Uh, I only, only. I went at 200, 220, and uh, and that actually gives me the finish that's good for what I'm doing here. So we're gonna just finish, finish making this transition, part it off, then we'll do the top. nice transition right here. Feels really good when I grab a hold of it. I'll just sand this real quick. Just needs a little bit of sanding to make it feel perfect. We'll part it off and do the top. So the, the bottom half has uh, is all blended in. I took uh, five or ten minutes and I just sanded it uh, to 220 and it's nice and smooth. Now we're going to go ahead and do this part of the top before I part it off. Uh, because these are all in line right now. And if I match it right now, I don't have to worry about it later. The one thing you got to worry about is you don't want to run up to the end right here and hit your, 
uh, gouge on the chuck. So, and all I want to do is just do a light cut on this right here just to true it up. slight chamfer on this but we know these two pieces match right because this is cut from here and I I don't even think I need to sand that so now I'm going to go ahead and finish this uh, with I'm going to use pens plus and I went ahead and signed it because once you put the finish on it makes it difficult to sign it and uh, I know some people use a wood burner and if you burn it after you put the polish on there, it smells awful. So now we're going to finish parting off the, the final part. And I try to angle this tool rest to be straight the way I'm cutting it. So whatever angle I'm doing here, this needs to mirror it. So if my center line is here and I'm cutting here, I want to make sure that my tool line, my, that this is straight in. If I have the tool rest like this at an angle, and I try to go this way across the tool rest, it has a habit to walk one way or the other. It doesn't want to stay straight. So I'm going to eyeball this, and I'm going to make sure that I'm lined up right where I want to be, and then with the lathe turned off, I'm going to get my parting tool, and I know I already cut it once, so I know that's my angle. We're going to adjust it. so that we're straight in off our tool rest because we don't want to get off now we get off now it won't it won't hit where we want and then I do want to mention when I ground this parting tool the top is slightly wider than the bottom. And then to remind myself, I put a red mark on the top so that I don't accidentally go this way and wind up binding my tool. We're going to go right about there. And hopefully, when we cut this, we wind up into that inch and a sixteenth cavity we already cut. We're going to slow the lathe down to maybe. Five hundred. see what I'm cutting, I'm going to put a light right there. Now I know I'm getting close, so I'm going to back this off so it's just, so it's just touching a little bit, but I don't want this in full contact because if, if it binds it'll grab my tool.
So right there at the end, right before it parted all the way off, I could hear the tone change in the cut. And I knew I was getting really close, so I kind of eased my cut up so I wasn't pressing very hard. And when it popped loose, it popped loose clean and didn't rattle. And I, I got within a sixteenth. Would you say that's a sixteenth, Roger? Mm -hmm. Of where I wanted to be. So which means this and this are perfectly matched. Uh, and I hit my cavity right where I wanted to. Uh, first couple of times, maybe not so much. But after you do it for a while and practice and get that angle down and get the feel, you'll be able to hit it right at the top. Uh, and the reason why I wanted to not go too deep with this, and we'll, we'll do that in just a second, is I, I need to make sure this is true. This, we know this cavity right here is perfectly aligned and, and 90 degrees from the flat. When we came all the way through, maybe this isn't. But we'll f we're going to fix this in the same chucked position as all of this was cut. And that to me is probably why they all line up. Because this was all chucked up at one position, cut all the way through. Now I'm going to cut this in the same chuck position that this was, and they will line up. So now we're just going to flush up this so we can get ready to put the top piece in. Now I'm just going to lightly sand this. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of Pens Plus. I'm going to get a grin, grab my tool for cutting a tenon. This grabs way inside, and I can glue right here along the top. It doesn't hurt because I didn't change the diameter right here. All I did is cut a, a dovetail into the mm -hmm. bottom. And once you put this in, nobody will ever see it's there. Okay. So you see me cutting tenons, but the other option is to cut a jam chuck. Uh, all you do is cut a jam chuck that this slides onto, and the, and the same with this. And you know these diameters. So you could make a jam chuck that had a nice flat edge on this side and, and wedged in there and do the same thing I'm doing. So now we're going to cut the relief that these lock into. Some people cut them off and just glue it. That's, that's up to you. I'm going to show you how to cut them. We're going to use the same tool that we cut the relief for the bottom. And it has a little line right here. That line corresponds with the depth here. But again, if you look at the depth, this tool isn't as wide as this. So I'm going to cut the, my original, and then I'm going to go a little bit deeper to make sure that this clears. And we're going to do that the same way that we did the base. see we're right on that line and there's also a notch in that you see a little notch but we're we know we're right on our depth but we're going to go a little bit past that just to make sure that thing sets we're 
good. And now, we're going to take this out. So now I'm going to go ahead and mount the bottom. I'm going to use my tenon that I cut earlier, which is right there. And I can feel it's right, at, right on the face. So, and I'm using an expansion instead of a contraction. But, again, the gap isn't real wide here, so I know the tenon size is pretty close for the jaws. And then I normally lock my spindle and spin it as I'm going in and make sure that thing is right up against it. Now, you got to be careful. You don't want to over tighten this because it will crack your, your base. So I normally go both sides and I go until I hit tension on both sides. Because I want to make sure there's no play in my chuck. And then it's on there. It's solid. It's not going anywhere. The important thing I want to do right here is I just want to clean up where I came through with the parting tool. That's it. I'm not going to take anything off. I'm not going to change the shape. All I'm going to do is make sure that this little lip right here is gone and clean. And again, I'm going to use 3 8 spindle gouge. So same principle I just used on the bottom, we're going to go ahead and put this in there, we're going to get it on the tenon where, it, where the lip is, and we're just going to spin it as we tighten this up to make sure we're, we're perfectly centered. This one is a little more forgiving because it's not as thin, so you don't have to worry as much about cracking it, but if it's a laminated piece, it can crack. But I'm, I'm taking up the play in both sides of my chuck. So now we're going to finish off the top. And we know we drilled in about an inch and a half, inch and five eighths. Uh, so we got plenty of room here. For this, we're just going to do a simple design. We're going to round it off. Uh, similar to the other ones I made, it's a pretty popular design. It's easy. Uh, it's, and it's attractive. So we'll cut this around. It, we'll finish it off and then we'll be done. design on top of mine and I use the spiraling and texturing tool. I put it at center, I touch on the inside and I just roll through and it puts a nice little flower on top. So now we're going to assemble this. I happen to have a tool that I made. I cut the, the waste piece that you cut off the top, made a handle for it to insert these into the top. If you don't, you can just push them in uh, they, they usually start in pretty good with the Alka tool. 
I just happen to like the way that the tool snaps them in there. And I normally <clears throat> put a little bit of CA glue, and I'll show you on the bottom. Uh, I put a little bit of CA glue. I don't use epoxy because the CA glue, if I need to take it apart, I can break it apart. The epoxy tends to bind just a little too well. And I use the thick CA glue. So now we're going to install the bottom. We're going to put it in, and like I said, I already sanded a little bit of that lip so that the flat spots of this clear. So we're just going to twist it and get it started. And we're going to stop right about there. And again, I'm going to put a couple dabs of the thick CA glue, three or four spots, usually in line with one of the veins. And I'm doing this because sometimes these things will want to spin on you in the cavity. So rather than have somebody have an issue with it, a little bit of CA glue ensures that this mechanism is not going to slip. And then these go together pretty straightforward. And you just pop it. Now I have a socket, but I've been threatening to make a wooden jam chuck or something to push these in. But I just use a socket. So now the, the bottom is in. I make sure I turn it all the way loose. And now we're going to cut this off to, mount, to match this. And I normally go like that. And then I just measure that I need to cut off about three inches. So then if I pop this off and I measure down three inches, I know I'll be lined up. I normally, my first cut, I'll go a little bit high because I want to make sure I'm good to go. And we should be, we should be good at three. So we're going to cut off three inches. And uh, I'll show you one more time before I cut this. And I'm just using a pair of line pliers. So what I did is I went ahead and I put this on and I forced it all the way until it hit the top, until it bottomed out. And then I just measured the bottom of my valley here to the bottom of the top. And that's three inches. So I know if I measure from the top down, cut three inches off, I'm going to be close. And then I use the lineman pliers. Cut it off. And now I'm going to take it over to my 12 inch disc sander and clean this edge up so that when I put it in here, the, the sharp edge from cutting it off doesn't tear up my top. So now I've cleaned this up a little bit. And if you look, this post is dead center with the bottom. So now we've got everything cut to fit. Snap it together and it turns perfect. It is centered, it's solid, easy to use. If you look on the bottom, we're centered, we're solid, good to go. Thanks for watching.